When it comes to drums, most beginners spend all of their time worrying about the pattern that they're building, when that's only half of the problem, which is why their drums only sound half as good as they could. So today I want to talk about what this other important missing piece is and the drum ideas that you can use to immediately start making better beats. My name is Navi D, I've been making beats for over 15 years, I've produced for a bunch of artists, made a soundtrack for a video game, and my dad is actually a drum set, so I think I know a lot about this topic. Now the best way to explain this drum idea is by making two separate beats and showing you how I would approach the drums for both ideas. So to start, let's quickly put a beat idea together. I'll grab this sample here. And I'll load it up into my sampler and use it to create a simple layer of strings. Now I'll get real freaky with this and experiment with it a bit. I kind of like this pulsating feel this effect introduced. Now at this point, this beat needs a little bit more, so let me grab this keyboard preset. And I'll build yet another pattern using this sound. From here, I'll resample the same layer, but pitch it down to bring more thickness to the beat. All right, so at this point, all that's left are the drums. Before that, let me quickly create a second beat so I can start showing you these drum ideas. I'll create a new project file, but this time I'll use this sample here. When I look in your eyes. And I'll bring this into my sampler and create a loop once again. I think this could use a bit more, so let me find yet another piece of the sample that I could use. At the end of the sample here, we have these keys, so let me try to use these as yet another layer in this beat. Alright, I think this sounds pretty good. At this point, you'll notice that both of these beats actually have similar instrumentation. They're both largely made up of strings plus some keys, but our first beat idea also had that layer of bass in it, so let me add that into this idea. And then we'll start talking about drums and how to do this in the best way possible. All that's left for both beats are the drums. Now when I get to this point in my beat, before I select a single drum or lay down a single note, I ask myself one important question. How much space needs to be filled in this beat? When we compare both beat ideas, you'll notice they are drastically different. Beat idea number one has a lot of space remaining in the beat that still needs to be filled up, especially as we get higher up in frequency. Whereas beat idea number two is much more filled already, so much less needs to be added in. And this is gonna be a major factor that I think about when making my drum decisions, but not in the way that you might think. So let's start with beat idea number one. Again, a lot of space needs to be filled here. So in this case, I'm gonna approach this idea differently. For one, I will start by choosing a drum loop. The reason why drum loops would be a good idea in this situation is because often, drum loops have a fullness and richness to them and continuity between each sound in a way that using separate drum textures may not provide. And this kind of small detail can help make the beat more full, more easy. Easily. So here I will grab this drum loop and start by using this. Now at this point, I feel like the drums need to fill up even more space. And for many producers, they might think that they need to do more with the pattern. That to get your drums to sound more full, well, you just need to create a more complex pattern. Start throwing in more snares, more kicks, more hi-hats, more everything. But I would say that this probably isn't the wisest choice here. Instead, when I need my drums to do more in the beat, I consider using expansionary techniques instead. For example, using distortion or saturation tools can be a huge game changer. You 
can hear these drums sound drastically different and much larger. Another simple idea is using transient processors. This lets you take your drum sounds and get them to sound much bigger or smaller based on what you want. Beyond this, layering is yet another way to take your current sound and to expand on them as well. So here we have the exact same drum pattern playing and technically speaking, the exact same drum sounds. But by using all of these expansionary techniques, our drums go from taking up this amount of space to this amount of space. All right, now let's move on to beat idea number two with the same mindset and approach. Since I'm thinking about space first, my decision making is gonna be different in this situation. Again, since this beat already has a lot of space taken up, it might be a good idea to use separate drum sounds rather than a robust drum loop. And even the drum sounds that I choose will be far less rich. And like I said, the drum pattern that you build might not be as big of a factor as you might think. For example, I could even make the same drum pattern as our last beat. With the last pattern that we made, it went kick, snare, kick, kick, snare with the standard eighth hi-hat pattern. So let's do the same thing here. Now again, I do feel like this drum pattern needs work, but this time I'm gonna use reductionary techniques. Like we talked about, a lot of space inside this beat is already full. So shrinking the drums and reducing how much space they take up might be a good idea here. And we can do this by truncating samples. We can use transient processors, but this time to shrink the sound instead. We can reduce how much space is taken up by using EQs and even emulation plugins, which basically reduce frequency space as well. And now that I have reduced all these drums and gotten them to shrink in size, this even allows me to introduce unique drum ideas to improve what I've built that might not have been possible otherwise because my beat might have ended up being overwhelmed. Now there's one more piece to this that I wanna talk about. Many producers ask questions like, how loud should I make my kicks or my snares? And they end up relying on these leveling guides that can be found all over the internet. But hopefully based on what I just showed you here, I would say to avoid these recommendation lists. There are so many factors in what makes a drum sound feel louder or quieter in the beat, just like you saw. A sound can feel more present and loud in a beat while technically having the exact same peak decibel level. These guides just don't tell the full story. Which is why I say there are other decisions that you can make to get your beats to sound more balanced using your drums and hopefully this video has shown you that. But if drum patterns is what you actually want to learn more about, I do have a video on that next to me. Click that if you're interested. Also hit like and subscribe before you leave. Otherwise, I will see you next time, my dear. Bye for now.